welcome, my friend, to the next episode of the Red Delta Project Podcast, helping you maximize your potential with minimalist approaches to diet and exercise. As always, I'm Matt Schifferly, founder of the Red Delta Project, author of the books that sponsor these episodes like Grind Style Calisthenics. My brand new book just came out, Overcoming Isometrics. Links down below in the description to the full RDP library and at reddeltaproject.com, as well as free ebooks for you. This week is part two of micro workout strategies, small workouts for big results. In last week's episode, I talked about micro workout strategies to improve your performance and proficiency. To quickly recap means that we're taking small little workouts that focus on improving your proficiency and how well you do the activity of your choice. You wanna take a fairly playful nature with it so you're not getting too caught up in numbers but really being more introspective with how well you can do the exercise. And then finally, you also wanna maintain and manage your fatigue level so you can get a lot more frequent practice in rather than drive your muscles into the ground and then you can't practice anything for several days while you're trying to recover. Today's episode is in the complete opposite direction, where we talk about micro workout strategies to help you build muscle. Essentially what this means is we want to use strategies that do push your muscles to a very high level of fatigue, place a lot of tension and resistance against the muscles, and force you to level up your numerical performance. So you're either working the muscles harder or longer over time. So it's not quite as playful. We do wanna be paying a little more attention to those numerical values. And when it comes to the general strategies that we want to adhere to, we want to follow a couple of basic guidelines. Uh, the first is we want to use basic movement patterns, essentially boring exercises, because the whole point of a muscular stimulating workout is to work the muscle as hard as possible and as long as possible and to effectively say, hey muscle, you need to step up and be able to produce more energy in a given period of time. That's very difficult to do with exercises that you struggle to do on a skill level. It's also very difficult to do for exercises that you feel kind of uncomfortable with, where if you start pushing yourself and you feel like, oh, I'm not so sure if this is safe or whatever, you're gonna bail on the exercise long before you've really pushed yourself to a high degree of proficiency. That's why they have spotters and stuff in gyms. It's not just safety in itself, but also just taking off those neural roadblocks so you feel safe and comfortable pushing yourself to a high level. Naturally, this is where bodyweight training is very good as well as overcoming isometrics. You can work very hard. You have basic movement patterns, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, lunges, squats. Boring exercises are the best for building muscle. And because you don't have loads that you might be uh, having to handle or get underneath, you don't need spotters and stuff, I personally find it's a lot easier to push my muscles a hell of a lot harder into that red zone with exercises like dips because you just put your feet down. You don't need a spotter. You don't need to second guess if you can get something. You just always give it a shot. And if you miss the repetition, you miss it, but it's no harm, no foul. I also quickly want to put in a little note here that this information I'm giving you today is based on my current understanding of how to most effectively create some sort of a stimulus for muscle growth in a workout. Now, the science these days is getting really interesting but by interesting, I mean we're scratching our heads even more by it's like, well, what exactly causes someone to get bigger muscles? Because the old idea used to be that, well, you basically slash, bash, trash, and crash your muscles into the ground, and then they build back up super compensation and they get bigger and stronger. But now some of the research is like, yeah, but you can cause muscle damage without any muscle growth at all. And this guy got big and jacked and his relative amount of muscle damage was very low. So we're finding now that there's a lot of pieces to the muscle building puzzle. There's of course, genetics is huge. Age, training age, training experience, uh, mental, emotional attitudes too. There's a lot of pieces to the muscle building puzzle. It's not nearly as simple as we used to think of, well, just train this way and you're gonna get jacked. Because no matter what we try and do, every time we think, oh, if we train this way, we're gonna get bigger, then we test it out. It's like, well, some people did, but a lot of people didn't. So it's not just that. So this is a perspective that I'm giving you now, which I'm sure is limited. I'm sure there's way more to building muscle than just how you train. But if we want to give ourselves the best chance in a very efficient workout, these are the strategies I recommend. 
The first strategy I recommend is from legendary strength coach Martin Rooney, training for Warriors fame, and he came up with a very simple strategy. It works very, very well. It's basically called the three-minute test. It's exactly what it sounds like. Take a very basic compound movement, let's say dips, and you have a timer for three minutes. How many reps can you do? Go. And the reason why the three minutes works so well is because it's too long to be able to do the reps continuously throughout. Uh, my general rule of thumb is if it, the exercise is something you can do repetitions for more than 45 seconds, it's too easy. But if you can't do it for more than 10 seconds, it's too hard. So you want something that you can do for roughly 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds before you have to stop. And you're going to have to stop. You have to pace yourself a little bit, but at the end of three minutes, you've given it everything you've got. You've asked a lot out of your muscles. You've brought them to a high level of fatigue and it only takes you three minutes. And that way, when you're done, like great, push chain, done, complete. You do that for pull, you do that for squat. That's like nine minutes of total work. Probably maybe takes you 12, 15 minutes, you're done. Great way to approach a full body or you could do it just one movement pattern like the dips and then call it a day or just break it up and say, okay, I do push in the morning, pull it in the evening. It doesn't really matter if you break it up throughout the day, but you do want to make sure that you're pushing those muscles very hard within a relatively short period of time. And that's what the three minute test gives you. Probably the best known strategy, of course, is the superset, or as I like to call them, double sets. Because oftentimes superset is assumed that it's pairing antagonist muscle groups together, pushing and pulling, for example, which is great because you put pull-ups and push-ups together, boom, 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 back and forth three to four times, done, and it's only gonna take you about five minutes or so. Fantastic way to go about this, very efficient, extremely effective, but I should preface with, all of these strategies, we don't want to rush. You don't want to rush and race the clock or anything because that can compromise your technique. We still want to have technical proficiency and quality, the utmost importance, not just for safety reasons, but we want to make sure we're getting as much out of the muscles with every single repetitions, work it as hard as possible. So with double sets or supersets, you can go antagonist pairings, like I said, push and pull. But I also like to go with the agonist parents, the same exact muscle group, two different exercises, one right after another. Now the two that I always like to do was squats and lunges together, which was featured in my leg training uh, micro workout video right up here. And you have lunges on one end of the room, or sorry, squats on one end of the room of whatever choice you like, goblet squats, pistol squats, whatever. Then you lunge across to the other side of the room, and you do squats there. You go back and forth a few times, smokes your legs real quick. Another one that's a lot of fun is you do dips and then you go right into push-ups. A friend of mine and I used to do this where we would be on dip bars and we tried to get a two to one ratio. So we'd get as many dips as we could. And let's say we got like 10 and then we wouldn't even let go of the dip bars. We just kick our legs out and our friend would hold our feet up. So we're kind of like supermaning above the floor and we do push-ups on the dip bars and we tried to get twice as many push-ups as we got for dips. Almost never happened. It was very difficult because even though you're going in a different angle, you're still using the exact same muscles, which are already pretty tired, but it's a great way to fry out your muscles very quickly. Uh, Pull-ups and then going right into rows, that's another one that works extremely well. Do that two or three times, not gonna take you very long, but it's gonna make the muscles work extremely hard. And then my third and also one of my most favorite ways to really punish a muscle, this works great if you have a stubborn muscle group too, which is a single joint and compound or multi-joint pairing. And this one is often referred to as either a finisher or a pre-exhaust strategy in the bodybuilding world. So a good example out there is doing a set of curls and then going immediately into some sort of polar chin variation, or you can do rows. So you're taking a muscle group, you're focusing on it with a single joint action, and then including the same muscle into another exercise that allows the other muscles to kind of help a little bit, but it's just getting more and more fatigued and worked on. So triceps, chest flies, right into push-ups or dips works very well. You could do isometric wall sits for the quads and then go into lunges. That's one of my favorites. You can do hamstring curls right into bridges. The other way you can do it is just opposite. 
So you do the compound movement first. You do the pull-ups, then you go into the curls kind of to finish it off. If you feel like that muscle group's just not quite getting the juice that it deserves during the compound movement approach, then you can kind of finish it off a little bit. And you can do this, of course, in several ways. You can do several sets of uh, the compound first, then the focused, but I always like to do one right after the other. In all of these strategies, you want to kind of keep rest not to a minimum, but uh, don't, let, don't rest too much. You want to hit the muscles and create a good amount of fatigue. The more you rest, the less fatigue you're going to have. Now, if you're going for more of, I want to be stronger, then yes, you want more rest. It's like do a set, wait an hour and a half, do a set, wait a long time so you can recover as much as possible. But if you're trying to stimulate hypertrophy, the fatigue of the muscle is primarily what we're going after drive the muscle into the ground, then keep at it. So you're probably gonna have a significant amount of reduction in repetitions, and that's what you want. You don't wanna have the strategy where you're like, I do a set of 10, and a set of 10, and then a set of 10. Uh, that means your first set didn't really push you that hard, or there's way too much rest. It's like I got a set of 10, and then I only got seven, and then I could barely peel myself off into off the floor for four repetitions. That's what you want. You want that fatigue to be accumulating during that little workout, so that way you know you're pushing your muscle towards its limits. And then, of course, you can use the backfilling strategy in grind style calisthenics that I talk about. You can check out the video here, and that's the easiest way to progress, is you have this decreasing amount of repetitions, then you backfill the other repetitions. That's the best way that you can improve your ability to uh, improve your work capacity of the muscles without overstressing your system, your joints, or your nervous system in a small, very tight, and very efficient workout format. Of course, I'm gonna have a lot more strategies in the Micro Workouts book that I'm currently writing that'll be out later this summer, but don't forget, you can check out other Micro Workout strategies in the playlist up here, thoughts and questions down below as well. Talk to you next time where I talk about micro workout strategies for burning fat. This is gonna be the most minimalistic approach to workouts of all three. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. Be fit, live free.